Right, well, I'm in Sheffield uh, again today to keep an eye on protests. One o'clock is NHS 100K, who are losing the jobs. 100,000 people are, are going to lose the jobs because they've not had the vaccine from the uh, NHS. At two o'clock we've got Extinction Rebellion, both at the Town Hall. Uh, they're protesting for the uh, Kill the Bill. The policing bill has um, it passed through Parliament in... Um, when was it now? In the summer, I think. It passed through Parliament in the summer, so it's now with the House of Lords. I think it's having its final reading in the House of Lords next week, so it will probably be passed as a law next week. That will have a good impact on, or a big impact on people's right to protest, because I've been at a lot of protests uh, this last year, and uh, I've seen bits of controversy, but uh, I've certainly not uh, encountered the worst of it. Um, I'm here today supporting our amazing healthcare workers, our NHS workers who have given their everything throughout this pandemic. And I support their rights to decide what medical intervention they do or don't do for themselves. In the last 10 years or so, since the Tory government got in, we've had cutback after cutback after cutback and we've seen the NHS care get worse and worse and worse, <laughs> waiting lists have gone up, people are denied care. We're now looking at about 100,000 people losing the jobs. Can, can the country afford to lose those people? No, I think absolutely not. I think absolutely not. So there is this huge issue of chronic understaffing in NHS, which is certainly going to be exacerbated by this step. But there is another issue here. Some of the people, some of the doctors, nurses, radiographers, will decide they cannot afford to lose their job, and they will take the vaccine against their will. And I don't think it's a good option for us either, because this will be people whose morale is broken. And I think it's these two things. First, NHS is already understaffed, so it needs a lot more investment, a lot more stuff. But also it needs stuff with good morale, stuff which feels they are valued. And that's what these mandates are certainly not helping with. So there's quite a big turnout for this NHS one right outside the Town Hall. Uh, Freedom Collective UK supports NHS 100k. We've got uh, footballers are dropping like flies. Or, no, it wasn't. It was flies are dropping like footballers. There's been a lot of controversy recently with uh, footballers um, having the vaccine and uh, then um, becoming seriously ill. And I, I don't know if any have died, I'll have to ask. No mandates for the NHS! And I will admit, I am quite interested to see uh, if the um, NHS people do end up clashing at all with the XR people. Um, the XR people tend to be relatively pro-lockdown, pro-restrictions. What do we want? No money! When do we want it? No! Go on, someone else now. <laughs> <laughs> We've had it in care homes. We're now looking at the NHS vaccine mandates. Do you think if, we, if, if this goes ahead, do you think it will trickle down into other professions? There is a um, very realistic probability. I think it is a risk. Yes, I think it is a risk, but it will trickle down to other professions. And I think uh, the mandates in this country, vaccine mandates in this country, is so abnormal. It's out of cultural norm to force people into medical intervention. So I think it's going to trickle down to other professions, but it's also going to further tear the fabric of society, as we often hear.
driving off, man. I bet they are. I've seen you coming. And you've seen the rampage. Yeah. He's pointing down. He's pointing downwards and not filming. Yeah. <laughs> you are. You're Sorry? Your fans recording. Oh, I, I, he's not with us. He is. Just, just clarify for me. You've been in the job now about a year, haven't you? Mark, you know this. Come on. It's about a year, isn't it? Yeah. Just a little I wanted to introduce you to somebody. How good is your intelligence? Uh, You've linked? got a mic as well. No, I haven't. I've got a radio. Oh, is it a radio? Yeah. What's that for? I'm keeping contact with people. We go all over the country, pointing out police corruption, um, prison systems, uh, covering protests, stuff like that. It is, but I'm glad to have seen you have been out on your feet rather than sat in the car the whole time. It's good to see the difference. Like mo most coppers, when I go to protests that are this, this, you know, calibre, they'll uh, they'll just sit in the car and just won't bother, you know. Yeah, that's it. That's what it's all about. Building a bridge. Oh, I said, uh, are you short staffed? Because you two are short, aren't you? So your staff is short people. No. <laughs> you could join them. I, I, I've got the height, haven't I? Oh, you have now, you have now, yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you're still enjoying the job. I'm pretty sure it's about a year, isn't it? What do you think the police are like in uh, South Yorkshire? Do you, do you think they're better or worse than anyone else? Um, well, they're just as bad as anybody else and they're just as good as anybody else. Um, when, when I do the sort of videos that I do, going to police stations, pointing out police corruption, um, nine times out of ten I've got a story in hand and it's not hard to find a story and that's the problem. It's so easy to find a story on police corruption um, and turn up at any police station in the country and report on that yourself um, and interrogate them, put the police on their toes and find out how they react to you being there just with a camera, just simply recording. It's fully illegal, it's fully a, a, a legal activity that you're doing, but they seem to deem it as a threatening behaviour. Yeah, because a lot of people think photography is a bit like terrorism for some yes. reason. We, we do get often used uh, terrorism, Section 43 of the Terrorism Act, uh, used against us. Um, but in, in that respect, all we do is turn around and simply say to them, do you believe I'm a terrorist then? And as soon as they go no, they've got no further grounds to stand on under that Terrorism Act. Yeah. And do you think there's a lot of, do you think some police forces are more corrupt than others? I think they're all the same. They're all, um, th there's all good and bad in everyone. But the unfortunate thing is, is in the police system, the good end up becoming bad because there's too many bad already in there. There's too many bad apples. Bad yeah, there's too many bad apples in one bowl and the good apples turn bad. If you criminalise the means of peaceful protest, the reasons to protest don't go away. Black people will continue to be discriminated against. Women will continue to be attacked. The climate will continue to collapse. They want to threaten us with the violence of the prison system. They hope to reduce our number. But they will, there will always be people with the moral obligation to keep fighting. <laughs> Instead of putting our nation's energy into solving these problems, they want to silence us, to turn off the alarm. You are the alarm, and we must raise that alarm as loud as we can. An awful lot. We were delivering people who were isolating. So they were isolating from the virus and we were showing up to their door. And we did it perfectly fine. We were happy. We were happy to keep the country going. And we figured when it was all done, they were going to look at us and they were going to respect us. They did not. They cut our money by 24% on the base rate and raised it all by 1,000%.
since then, we have striked non-stop. I think today is either day 24 or 25. We managed to hold it consistently in this amazing system. Not only that, but we've been out up and down the country to get many other cities taking strike action with ourselves against Stuart. And we have won some stuff. We are also now the only delivery company in the city who will pay drivers for waiting at the restaurant. But they didn't give us our payback. So we will be continuing the strike. We have no intention of slowing down and no intention of stopping. We are going to strike non-stop until we get what we deserve. And after that, Ubersnet. After that, Deliveroo, DPD, Hermes, everybody. Anybody working in the kid economy. working for agencies, working from job to job. They think that these people can't strike. We are paving the way forward to say, yes, you can. Today, and yeah, anybody here, you all look like you're a little good protest, who wants to join us on the picket line, we're at Farm Road McDonald's, Archer Road McDonald's, and High Street McDonald's between 5 and 8 p.m. Anybody wants to come down and make some noise with us, I say you're welcome.